Okay, hello. Long time no see, yet again. It's like every time I post and I go another like month and I, I don't post and then I post again. But here we are in the wonderful Chiang Mai, Thailand. I'll show you my uh, view. It's a little cloudy today. It's a little cloudy today. But you can see the mountain. It's quite nice. I quite enjoy where I live. So, what's happening right now? It's about 1 p.m. and I just woke up from a nap. And um, this morning, dang it, I can't seem to uh, just do it a little bit. Okay. Um, this morning I trained at eight o'clock. Started about eight o'clock, eight twenty or so. I ran maybe three uh, kilometers, about two miles, maybe a little more, and then uh, wrap my hands, shadow box, and then. Uh, did pad work. I trained Muay Thai for for about an hour and a half, and after running, and then I drove my bike to buy raw milk. I went and got raw milk, and brought the raw milk home. Drank a bit of it. Fell no. Put my laundry in the laundry. Fell asleep. And that's where we are now. Now it's 1 p.m. My laundry is done. I need to go hang that up. And then I also need to go get some dish soap so that I can make myself lunch real quick, which is going to be, I'll show you. This hunk of pork. Pork collar. And let me know what y'all think in the comments. Tell me if y'all think this is some good looking pork or not. Because if you ask me, it ain't bad looking pork and it don't taste too bad. I mean, look at the marbling. Yeah, it it's pretty red. It's pretty dark red. It's not bad if you ask me thing is, of course, I'd rather eat beef. Y'all know me. But beef in Thailand is not a realistic um, financial option for me. So I stick with the pork and, I, and it's okay. And I cook it. I got a little halogen oven over there to stick it on the grill, put the lid on, turn, turn on the lamp, and then cooks me pork. I put some salt on it. Pull it out, fork and knife. It's pretty good. I eat about a kilo. Or, uh, some days I eat about a kilo of it. Some days I eat about half a kilo of it. Depends. Today it would be about half a kilo, I think. Same thing yesterday. Um, and, uh, what else? I've been interested in, in plastic. Uh, so probably some of you guys have seen already uh, Primal Edge Health came out with a podcast with, I can't remember his name, Dr. J something. I might even be wrong with the J. Anyway, this dude wrote a book called Estro Generation. He's very well read and well researched. He's a scientist. He's, uh, he, he's interested in... Um, estrogenic compounds within plastic uh, and within soy and other foods and, and clothes and, and all these things that we're surrounded with. Um, he's super knowledgeable about that stuff. And anyway, he did a podcast with Tristan, Primal Edge Health, and it was awesome. It was really good. So that's got me thinking about like, the thing is with, with Thailand, I've heard, I, I haven't confirmed the statistic, but I've heard that Thailand is the second biggest consumer 
a plastic in the world. And that's not relative to population. That's just cold, hard numbers. Thailand is the second biggest consumer of plastic in the world. And I believe it because everything here is in plastic. They, they, they give you a drink that's in a plastic bottle and then they'll put that plastic bottle in a plastic bag and then maybe even put that bag in another bag. And then they give you a plastic straw that's in a plastic that's in an individually wrapped plastic bag, and and um, yeah, it's I mean bananas here. You go to Seven Eleven, bananas are individually wrapped in plastic. It's um, it's kind of out of hand. So I've been doing what I can to reduce the amount of plastic that comes in contact with me and the food that I eat. I just bought cotton bed sheets and pillowcases, 100% cotton. Before it was this material, which I believe is some type, some type of polyester or something like that. I still, my comforter is still like this. I need to get a cotton blanket, but my sheets, pillowcase, now cotton. So that's new. Uh, what else is new? I've changed my deodorant. I was using, first I was using Nivea, some Nivea roll-on, not good. It's, um, has a lot of nasty sounding ingredients and so I stopped using that um, since I come to Thailand because it's definitely definitely has some ingredients that are probably accumulating within my brain and so I want to get rid of that and then so I switched to uh, crystal deodorant I don't know if you guys know what that is but it's like a stick uh, it's like a it seems like a rock and you just like wet it and then rub it in. Um, but that also has aluminum in it. And the aluminum, if you don't know, it accumulates, it, it does absorb dermally into your body and then it does accumulate uh, in your brain. So got rid of that and now I'm using vinegar. So I'm using vinegar as deodorant. It sounds a little crazy, I know. But um, what happened was I bought vinegar to do my laundry because my laundry with my training, it's I sweat and it gets gross. Actually, no, the reason I bought it was because of my sheets. I bought new sheets and you kind of have to use vinegar to get all the nasty chemicals off the sheets when you first buy them. So I bought vinegar for that. And then I thought, why can't you use vinegar as deodorant? So I looked it up and people do. There's there's people on forums talking about it that that. They use like a half and half water vinegar in a spray bottle, ch -ch -ch, spray it on, and that's what they use. So I gave it a try the other day, and it seems to, it smells really vinegary at first, but then it dries, and then it's like your armpits still sweat, but like the bacteria that normally uh, accumulates and goes on doesn't go on anymore so it doesn't smell um so yeah vinegar is deodorant i think it works so maybe you could try that maybe that'll help you guys out i was having a, a long time i've had problem with with deodorants because like you know you have like people in the school of thought and they say like you don't need deodorant just like shower and then make sure your shirt's clean and you'll be okay. For me, it doesn't work. I, I smell bad. I smell bad. And it, I don't know why, but my armpits just smell bad. So that didn't work. And But I did that for a long time. And, and so that's why I didn't have a girlfriend for a long time. And people didn't like me that much. And my family hated it, of course. Um, but that doesn't work. And then so then I was like, oh, screw it. I'll just get the normal whatever stuff um and i don't think that's good long term either there i mean there are like natural deodorants um excuse me <sighs> sorry there are natural deodorants that i know people have and i could buy some here in Chiang Mai. it's there's like hippie shops everywhere i could buy some but I don't know. I've tried to use baking soda before and that didn't seem to do anything. And I think that's the most common ingredient within like a natural deodorant. So I was hesitant, skeptical about the natural deodorants. But anyway, vinegar seems to work pretty well. So 
Um, what else? What else? I changed my body soap to a, a more natural body soap. Um, BPA. Um, bear with me if you already watched this interview, this podcast that I've been speaking about with Primal Edge Health and the, and the doctor, the estrogen man. He, um, he clarified BPA and what, and what that means. It's biphenol A. But the thing is, when something says it's BPA free, biphenol A free, it can have bif biphenol F, biphenol S, biphenol C, like basically any letter of the alphabet. It can have a different version of biphenol. And um, it's going to be a plane coming. Let me pause. Okay. Um, anyway, yeah, so there, it's just because something's BPA free doesn't really mean anything. I learned, so that's a very interesting piece of information. If you ask me. Um, so yeah, basically every day I'm training Muay Thai now. Um, I was teaching English, but right now I don't have much work. So like I, I'm working only a few hours this week, so I'm just kind of dedicating myself, okay, Muay Thai in the morning, sleep, eat, Muay Thai in the evening, sleep, or eat, sleep, wake up, Muay Thai, in the, sort of like this. So that's what I'm up to. Maybe also in this video, maybe I'll include some, some footage of my training. Um, I've lost weight. Uh, about 10 pounds, maybe a little more. Um, but that's okay. Like uh, when I was in America, I was lifting weights a lot and I got strong and, and heavier. And um, that's not really necessary or helpful within Muay Thai. It's, it's not. It, it can be. Um, but really to... To be powerful in Muay Thai, it's a lot more about technique. Muscle counts, but like I have enough to be powerful. Like I got enough of it. I don't need really any more muscle to be powerful. It's more about technique, um, speed, and then also being a little lighter helps you to be quicker. Um, so if you can be quicker, then you can also be more powerful. I mean, when you're just dealing with only your body and pr projecting your body weight, like Bruce Lee, yeah, you don't need to have huge muscles to be very efficient with that and, and powerful with that, if that makes sense. When, you, when, you're, when you're adding something external, external weights, yeah, you start to bulk up and, and um, it becomes necessary to... to have the big muscles to move around that weight but when you're just moving your own body weight and and within these certain movements and kicks and you don't really bulk up like that it, even less so than if you're doing like a lot of calisthenics which i'm i am doing push-ups still but uh not like really dedicating myself to that as much as i am punching or kicking and that sort of stuff so Hopefully a fight coming soon. Um, actually, I'm, I'm hesitating to fight. I'm scared, but I was scared last time also. So, it, like last time I was, I was excited, so I just did it. But now I know what's coming and I know that I probably, plane, plane. It's more scary this time because I know what's coming. I know I, I probably won't be able to walk for three days. I might get a huge cut. I might, so. I'm hesitating this time, but I'm in good shape now. I, I probably could fight next week. I just got to tell my coach that I'm ready. So there's that. Maybe I'll post that. Yeah, I, I should. I I would like to post my 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 fights here because yeah, I think you guys enjoy watching that. It's it's cool to see. Um, other than that, 
my my ramblings about myself i i don't really have much else um i don't really have much else to say that was just me talking about myself and what i eat uh, completely completely vain rambling for 15 minutes or so hope you enjoyed um Oh, one one more thing. Actually, I that is, that's new with me. I joined the Christian Orthodox Church. I'm a I'm a catechumen in the Christian Orthodox Church. Um, I became interested in that because of uh, Tristan and Primal Edge Health. I always I don't know something about his gaze and his uh, just his energy. I I thought was profound. And there was something special about it that I'd never seen before. And um, after learning he was into Christian Orthodoxy, and then and then his friend Jay Dyer, who I also really admire and really respect, also into Christian Orthodoxy, I started researching Christian Orthodoxy. And um, I became very... Initially, I was very... Um, mesmerized by the iconography, the, the art, the, the iconography within orthodoxy, the, the pictures and paintings of the saints and fathers. I was mesmerized by it. I thought it was beautiful. And I, I've read the Bible before just to myself and I've had profound experiences with that. And I started looking at some of the, the reading or the teachings and the writings of some of the fathers and found that to be profound. And so I, I went to, there's eight, there's eight churches, eight Orthodox churches in Thailand. And one of them happens to be about a 15 minute drive from me. So I went, I visited and I had no idea what I was doing. And they were confused that some American man is just walking into the church and, you know, I didn't know how to traditionally greet them and, and all the all these things i didn't know what i was doing but the priest was very welcoming and very kind to me and he still is um so i he told me i went on like a thursday or something or a wednesday and he's like come back on sunday morning and so i did i, I went sunday morning and uh he has been teaching me and, and he, he gave me a book to read and um I've been going every Sunday for about two months now, and next month I plan to be baptized by my priest. He said he would baptize me around Easter if I continue to study and come to the liturgy. And um, it has been awesome. It has been really awesome for me so far, um, that whole experience and prayer and all the things that go along with that so that's that's new for me that's um, actually more important than everything I talked about previously or more powerful and has been more uh, influential for me than many thing else I talked about that whole time um, so if you stuck around if you stuck around to the end of the video you got to you got the gold nugget there. Um, so yeah, that's new. Maybe I'll make videos talking more about that. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not in a position to educate anybody really about that. I mean, yeah, I can some basics, but I can tell my own story, and um, that's all I got, I guess. Um. Anyway, I hope you guys leave some comments and say what's up. It's always good to hear from you guys and some some of you guys that have been around for a long time. It's always good to see your name pop up in the comments. So, um, Thanks for watching. God be with you. Bye-bye.